Welcome to episode 192 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders. And back with us this week is Mr. Kevin Wheeler, our founder. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing well, Chris, and it's good to be with you again. And I think you did a great job in your compilations of various podcasts that are themed. And I think that was a great idea because I suppose we all live busy lives and uh, we don't want to randomly walk through 192 episodes of podcasts as good as it as they are Chris as good as they are <laughs> uh, you it's good to be able to focus to hey I'm interested in property I'm interested in business whatever pillar you may be interested in then you pointed them in the right direction did a great job so that was great and that gave me a little bit of time to yeah yeah what else have you been up to in uh, in that time Kevin I, I did a little bit of um a tour around the Scandinavian countries. I uh, just thought it, you know, would be a, a real good thing to do and uh, really enjoyed it. I went to Copenhagen and then to Gothenburg and to Stockholm. And um, my wife loves ABBA. So we went in expecting and we came out dancing. It was great. You know, is it? It was a fun place to do. Um, some observations as always. And it's interesting that some observations you make in countries can frame a business, can't they, Chris? As we'll hear from our guest today. But I, I got some fascinating insights on my Scandinavian trip. And by the way, Chris, you know that um, uh, I've studied French and I've studied Spanish and my English isn't too bad, but I found my Danish wasn't wasn't as good. No. I tried a few words and my, my favourite words in Danish, right, is... Which means strawberries and cream. Right, okay. So, you know, I do try. I do like to give it a go. But, uh, do you know, in Sweden and in Denmark, they teach kids English from the age of seven. So they are just brilliant at it by the time they get to 18. You know, everybody speaks English and they don't let you speak any other any other language. So it's not like the French. You know, you go, go to France, you don't try. They look down their nose at you, certainly in Paris. Uh, but they're just a lovely, lovely uh, group of people. I enjoyed uh, my time there very much. I noticed one thing which caught me out. So I got a bit of a wealth building lesson there, Chris. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, tell us, please. So so I went there thinking, well, you know, I might as well load up on a bit of currency because uh, I hate the banks taking money out of my money just because I, you know, make a transaction. So, so I, I took a healthy amount of uh, both uh, Danish and Swedish krona. I couldn't spend a bloody penny. <laughs> couldn't spend a krona. Could not spend it because they're virtually cashless. Right. Yeah, they you couldn't get a cup of coffee. They would not let you pay with cash. So I've got you know I'm, I'm do you remember that um, comedic sketch going back years? Loads of money. Yes, I do. <laughs> Harry Enfield, eh? Harry Enfield, carrying a watch. I had a water crowd to go, loads of money, have a coffee. <laughs> Wouldn't spend a thing. No. Anyway, but joke, joking aside, it just sort of made me realise that different countries give you different lessons. And in Denmark and in Sweden, they are brought up to know that there's so few people speak those Germanic languages, I mean, their base is Germanic, um, that they have to speak English. And fair play to them. And as a result of that, you know, they they can go really wherever they want to, whereas English speaking. So they often do that in the same way as Australians and, and New Zealanders often do that. But the, the thing that on the cashless side was interesting for me was how are the kids in Sweden and Denmark going to get to understand the true value of money? You know, notes and coins, okay, they're getting less these days. But of course, they're the very foundation on which we learn. And uh, made me um, think more about the Wealth Builders Families Program and bring in some tools and lessons to help parents show kids and help do like basic maths. You know, here's some money in a, in a game and they can play with your children and what's the change? So that they actually feel and touch money in a way that they don't do in, in other countries. I just don't like the idea that somehow kids can assume literally money's available on tap. And I mean tap. 
um, a different kind of tap, obviously. Just here we go, tap, here we go, tap. And, and I think it removes the, the sense of value. And um, and I'd like to make sure as part of our resources, Chris, we, um, we use uh, some coins and notes in our teachings for the younger children so that they get to understand that money is based on notes and coins in circulation. But, you know, fascinating uh, trip. And thanks for asking about that. And um, I think what's interesting in our guest today is the observation that in different countries, while the wealth building principles apply wherever you live in the world, we won't be translating them into Swedish, I'm sure. Uh, so we'll we'll keep the wealth building principles alive. However, I think it's important to stress that in some other countries, the way the practical operation of certain rules and legals work can can make you have to change your your approach completely. And we saw that with our guest today, who's a uh, uh, Guillaume uh, Black, who's a, a French guy, uh, who's built a business in the UK now. And I've shared a stage with him on more than one occasion, actually, now. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with Guillaume. Uh, I'm always in awe of anybody who creates a business in a country where it's not their first language. Uh, just completely in awe. But done a fantastic job, and you did a great job in pulling out the lessons from his experience in building his business, uh, Property Filter, here in the UK. And just a quick note before we listen to his interview, just want to congratulate him as well on the birth of his new baby, Alea. Uh, what a beautiful name as well. So uh, congrats to him and his partner and congrats to you for uh, looking after the shop while um, I was Scandinavian about. And uh, hopefully we get some good value from our guest today. Yeah, yeah, we will indeed. And and I can say Guillaume also had very, very kind words to say about you too as well, Kevin. So uh, anyway, enough of the platitudes. <laughs> so uh, let's get to our interview today with Guillaume Black, who is the CEO of Property Filter. And uh, Guillaume's created an online software, really help property investors find and manage more deals. And especially if you're someone who likes to find motivated sellers, I think you're really going to enjoy the conversation today. So let's head on over to our conversation with Guillaume Black. Guillaume, welcome to Wealth Talk today. How are you? Very good. Thanks a lot for having me, Chris. Yeah, no, it's really, really a pleasure to have you here. And I think we're going to be talking about something that our listeners will be very, very interested today. And uh, at the heart of it, it's just about how can we get more deals? So if yep. you're a property investor and you're listening now, stay tuned because Guillaume has come up with something very exciting. So let me uh, hand it over to you to, just to give a little bit of background about yourself and, and your company, Guillaume. Yeah, so uh, I'm Guillaume Black. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Property Filter, and uh, we help uh, decisive investors excel at finding deals. We built uh, basically an online platform, which is all about finding deals, identifying motivated sellers, and a framework for you to convert really hot uh, leads into great deals. And we've built it in a way so that very predictably, you can have an endless supply of deals. You know? So you're, if you're in property, you know, like uh, you can't not see this uh, because it's where all the deals are, and ultimately, uh, it's going the way we are disrupting the market. Uh, more and more people are jumping on it. Uh, you don't want to miss the boat. Basically, it's quite um, it's yeah, it's going to be quite a game changer for you if you want to scale, grow, and have a predictable pipeline of good quality leads and deals. Yeah, we've just used that word predictable, which is, you know, a key mm. thing that we talk about at Wealth Builders is creating predictable streams of recurring income. And whilst we're focusing, I guess, primarily on property today, um, you know, we're also, of course, looking at the business pillar because you've built a, a really fantastic business here. But also, you know, we can touch on some of the other pillars that you're leveraging as well and show how, you know, all of these converge to uh, to help someone build that long term wealth. Um, so let's before we get into the details of, of what Property Filter is and, and how it helps people, Guillaume, um, you know, let's look at the run-in. How did it come about? What were you doing before you started this business? Yeah, so for, uh, for 10 years, I was an engineer. I was uh, in charge of multi-million pound construction projects, building re world record bridges and, and things like that. I realized my childhood dream as a career. But then, you know, like, you, you know, be careful what you wish for sometimes. And, uh, you know, it, it, the, the novelty of traveling and things faded away with the, the lack of uh, work-life balance. And, and, I, and, I, and I started to look at things, you know, like 
type of content the wealth builders are putting out and things like that like that and surely there was a there was an, another way for me i've been doing stuff in property since uh, 2012 so i did like bond conversions and some flats in france uh, didn't make a nickel out of them because i had no idea what i was doing there's no interest only mortgages you can't refinance i mean uh, basically uh, Basically, the refurb that I did cost more than the value of the property at the end. The kind of stuff you know you, you do when you don't know what you're, you know, like in my hometown village, you know, so and uh, where there's no no demand and stuff like that. So did quite a few mistakes in property, uh, but still was working. And then I moved to UK in 2016. Kept on doing the same uh, same same work. Kept on traveling around the UK, uh, England, Wales, and stuff like that. But then really was looking for uh, for something you know outside of my job to you know, because surely I couldn't be doing uh, what I was doing you know in the long in the long long run, and I always liked property. It's why I was attracted to it you know back in 2012 and and um, because I'm a very concrete and practical guy. So it's why studying engineering I went into bridges and and construction and adding you know seeing and what the reason why i love properties is the reason why i had this job in the first place is you see progress you see i like the refurb i like managing projects and um that's why i got into property in the first place but the reality is that i was working 60 hours a week for my day job uh and then on the side of that you know uh, i was trying you know starting this side of of property and uh, you know it didn't matter how much i would wake up at 5 a.m you know, to look for properties, book the viewings during the lunchtime, and then stack them on the weekends. The reality is that uh, I really struggled to find deals. And uh, what we find later on is that uh, it's a, you know it's the number one skill you need as a property investor. If you can't find deals, you know, I mean, it's it's a non-starter. Uh, quite frankly, you can, you, you, can, you probably can buy your one property and then you're stuck. You know, so you need really good quality uh, deals uh, for you to keep the momentum uh, going, for you to keep on adding value. And um, and I really struggled because what I was doing was scrolling through the portals, you know, like this, which is the main source, uh, the main source of uh, of properties, randomly booking viewings based on the pictures, the layout, only to find myself, you know, stacking those viewings on the weekend, you know, like week after week, uh, speaking with vendors who were not motivated because I could only do four or five viewings a week, uh, and I, I this is not enough to get lucky, if you like. So week after week. I would just delay my property progress by a week, and it took me eighteen months of not achieving anything. To uh, you know, like to 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 think to myself, there's got to be a better way. So we started to build a little. So a friend of mine uh, got on board on you know the property side, and we asked his uh, his brother, you know, can you, which is like a techie guy, can, can you do a bit of thing for us where we just want to we just want to see motivated sellers. We just we just want to go and view properties where they are signed, and the seller is going to be motivated. Initially, it was a very simple system, you know, uh, that would qualify viewings. We will only view properties if the sale has fallen through multiple times, if there were multiple reductions, if it was listed with multiple agents, if it was an indication that uh, there was a problem, basically, because it was for sale for less than what is like it last sold or thing, things like that. And at the beginning, it was just our own thing for, for us. And uh, it didn't have a name, you know, no branding or anything. It was a low software, you know, and um, and and fast forward, you know, 18 months or 18 months of me not really achieving anything despite, you know, f- doing all the right things and, the eff- and you know, like most people put all the efforts, uh, you know, like uh, surround themselves with the right people, get the knowledge, you know, for, you know, with the likes of you guys. And, uh, but then it's, it's really hard, you know, to, to get the initial traction. Uh, and then 18, 18 months basically of struggling. And then there was a true before and after when we had uh, what is now property filter. Fast forward another 18 months and I was full-time in property. I, I left my, my career and my executive job, you know, at, uh, you know, this uh, bridge uh, building company that I've been working for for 10 years, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, there was real, a real before and after. Uh, it's called property filter now, uh, not property finder, because it, the biggest problem we have is, is that there's a lot of noise. You know, there's a lot of properties out there, but how do you filter out all the noise? Uh, 90% of what's on the market is a waste of time. So how do you go straight with the low, you know, straight to the low hanging fruits, straight to those uh, conversations where the vendor is going to be, uh, you know, motivated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic story there of the transition from you know employed to to entrepreneur, and um, I think the biggest thing is the time, isn't it? And and we speak to people every day, and when we ask them, you know, what is it that's really driving you to want to build wealth? And almost always, it's more time. And, you know, it's the one thing we all know that, you know, we can't get any more of. And yeah. um, 
and how much time you're saving here for people is just incredible. Um, you've shown me the software. You know, I, I've, I've seen just how powerful it is. Uh, and I'm excited, actually, for, for everyone listening to, uh, you know, be able to get their, their kind of hands on it as well. And we'll, we'll talk towards the end of, yeah. of how mm -hmm. people can do that. But um, OK, so you talked about a problem, right? And, and this is typical kind of entrepreneur, isn't it? You know, like you experience a problem and you think, right, OK, can't see anyone else who's solving it. What can I do myself? And, and I guess you really just were bootstrapping in those early days, weren't you? Yeah, but so it's interesting you, you use the word entrepreneur because I was nothing but an entrepreneur, you know, like imagine a French <laughs> guy, who's, you know, socialist state, you know, kind of education and uh, environment and spend 10 you know i never i never had an interview you know like i, I got my first job i had an interview at that time but that was it you know like you set for life you know like, you know that i was probably the opposite of what you would describe as an entrepreneur you know and i became so specialist in my in the company i used to work for that basically i was comfortable you know and they couldn't sack me because they needed me too much you know so uh, I, I was really you know like really the opposite of what you would think as an entrepreneur so all of this was also a journey on the side so property was one of the vehicle that got me into entrepreneurship but all of this happened a little you know me being a business owner of a tech startup right now uh you know it's not something that i was running through my veins uh you know like since i was 12 you know uh yeah. you know uh, i think i was 30 when i re reached that for poor dad you know like it's not you know <laughs> like it's not uh you know it's not been in my in my blood and veins since the beginning so it was quite a learning yeah and uh, and so and so yeah then we moved into uh yeah mo moved into solving a problem for ourselves really yeah and then by accident re it happened that uh, because of the traction we got so quickly uh, after that it attracts some at attention you know our property cir circles people asked to oh can we have a look at it and then we started to share it with uh, uh, you know our property friends friends of friends people in our network and then they started to refer people and, and at the beginning it was super clunk clunky you know like uh, we just built it for for ourselves you know and so, you know, the feedback we were getting was, okay, this is interesting, there's, there's something, and we realized that there was nothing quite like it. And um, there was nothing quite like it because a lot of the things we would find, <clears throat> there are software that can give you like data, but there's nothing that gives you, excuse me, <clears throat> nothing that gives you a framework, like an actionable framework where, <clears throat> excuse me, a framework where you would uh, know what you need to do today uh, you know, to progress, you know, what's the next step, you know, and the way it's been built is all about, you know, what action do we need today, the handful of action to take today to progress. Uh, and it just, it's it just quite unique in that way. And it's why people start to get results. And, it, you know, other than us, because, uh, you know, <laughs> you always think there's something special about you, but there isn't. So when other people start to get more results and success than, than you, then it's when the traction starts to kick, to kick in, you know, really, and uh, we we now have uh, more case studies of success of people finding deals, you know, than you know any kind of software, you know, around around property. So we are in a really good, uh, really good positioning uh, with people doing really well from from it for we, where we are now. Yeah, yeah. Well, considering you know the the company is still. Uh, relatively young and you know yeah, yeah. you've only really just soft launched not that long ago uh, you've got hundreds of users already you've got fantastic testimonials we've talked about the amount of time this is saving um, and yeah. what are some of the other features and benefits that perhaps you know if someone went to your website what is what are some of the key things that you know are really helping people yeah so so this is where you know we are engineers and we are not really marketers so People don't get it sometimes because we are not very good at explaining it. So um, I'll try to do my best. But it's, it's, it's what you said, you know, like about um, you know, valuing one's time. So really what we've done is uh, we, we uh, match and merge hundreds of data sources all, you know, all, in one, all in one place, in one platform. And we've built it on, under an interface, you know, under a platform that uh, people, can, people can use. Quite, it's quite simple. And the, the database we've we've done is really uh, is really excellent. It's really above anything else. So I've, I've I've it's not me telling this. You know I've heard this from. So we've hired people from. Um, you know uh, you you guys must know about uh, Purple Brick. The guys who founded Purple Brick they then went on to uh, they wanted to disrupt Brightmove. They they raised like thirty five million and to create uh, Booming, uh, which was uh, on uh, for for a few years. They were building it. And then they came uh, flat on their face last year. You know, they, they couldn't make it because it's really hard to compete with, uh, with Rightmove. So I messaged all these guys, you know, all the tech guys uh, of their team. 
and the, the most senior of their guys is now working for us, uh, helping us building property filter. Uh, so he was yeah one of the one of the fund funding uh, tech guys basically to build Purple Brick. Then went on to be the most senior one in in Boomin and works for us. And I know he looks at what he looked at what we've done and it's like, okay, it's, you know I've been around this game for years and years and you know what you've done is above anything else. You know like you know if we only if we think about the portal themselves, you know I'm not even talking about. Uh, you know, like property investors, tools people have done in their garages, you know. So really, uh, it's the excellence of the database that we make available uh, to people all about finding deals. So it's all about uh, all about finding deals. So it's very niche and focused for property investors to find deals. Uh, and it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't try to do other things. It's very niche and focused for that. Uh, and it's all about identifying motivated sellers generating leads uh, where you probably want to focus your energy on the top 5%, the top 10% of property that are uh, around, and then a framework for you to convert these deals into great deals. And, and because it's a framework, because it's a step-by-step -step process, it makes uh, success very predictable. People build very healthy pipelines. Uh, and then we, with deals, it's funny because it's uh, people say, oh, well, I'm not looking right now, you know, um, so I'll come and see you uh, in a bit, you know. But it's a bit like dating, you know. It's when you don't, you know. It's it's when you don't need it that it's it's coming to you all the time. You know? So yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so. it's great. And uh, you know, I think so many people will will know the the updating of the spreadsheet, right? And you've got to keep going back okay. in and checking the links, and you know, and then if you go on the site, you know, you're seeing the same old properties uh, day after day. Um, but you know, this is completely different, right? This is just yes. pulling, as you say, pulling any update from absolutely everywhere on the internet. So all of the, you know, individual agents that are out there, as well as all of the sort of aggregated portals, and uh, it's all there, right? Exactly as you want it. And as I say, just it's so. Time saving. Yeah, so to to go into more detail, so basically some of the yeah features and benefits. So you know, we find most property full address. Uh, you'll have the full postcode of all properties all the time. You'll know when a property. So it's the equivalent of having right move Zoopla on the market, uh, prime location, lots of lots of portals all in one place. So when you're on property filter, you don't need to look anywhere else. And we match and merge things. You know, so when um, when when you go on on right move, the listings will be organized by agent listings. So it's why you'll have on page one, you'll have one property with one agent on page four, you'll have the same property with another agent. And then people are very proud, you know, when they, when they find, you know, they find the match, you know, two of them half a day, but uh, <laughs> so we match on property filter. So it's all uh, property uh, displayed. And then we, we have the different listings layered on top. So a property will have multiple listings from different agents and you can have the history of previous agents listing it and failing to sell. So, it's a great way, you know, it's a great, great, great way to find deals because when you see that uh, one agent failed to sell a uh, property, now listing with another agent, and sometimes you've got a chain like this of three or four agents. So you can always speak to agent one or agent two who, who lost the instruction. And the agents are funny, you know, like they, it's never their fault, you know, when they lost an instruction. So they, they will tell you everything, uh, everything that's wrong about the property, everything, the vendor this, the vendor that, the property this, the property that. So it really gives you an edge, uh, you know, uh, with these things. And there's so many, so many, so many, so many ways with this. So uh, the the key the key thing is identifying signs of motivation and and building up on you know like this data that gives you actionable you know like uh, steps and and sometimes you know people have grown because it's been so hard to find deals you know last year you know the vendors market etc which is now gone but uh, people have gone a lot more. Um, addicted to their right move alerts and reacting, you know, trying to be the first one to view a property. But the reality is that, um, you know, this is really like observe the masses and do the, do what the masses do, you know, when you react to the right move alerts. So you've got all this uh, light refurb investor crowd, you know, the homes on the armor crowd, you know, like just, just go and look, try to look for this property when it's the market. But if you put yourself in the shoe of a vendor, you know, it's quite common sense really. So. They've, they've played with the idea of selling their house for a few months now. Then they decide they want to sell their house. They, they go on the likes of Zoopla and they ask for a valuation. This is actually a lead magnet for an agent. Uh, three to five agents will come and outbid each other to get their business. So it's like, oh, wow, we bought this property in the 90s for 40,000 and we can now sell it for 350,000 plus. Incredible, you know, never, you know, they never expected that the, the value of their property is the reality. And then the, so the best bidder agent basically puts it on the market. 
and then what happens you know like there's thousands and right move alerts that go out and everybody gets it you know so on day one they get uh, 10 15 20 people during the property say oh my god you know this is the agent was right you know and so the expectation is uh, as high as it could be and uh, you know it's probably the opposite of a definition of a motivated seller you know so so observe the mass and do the opposite you know ditch the right move alerts they pile in your email inbox it's junk it's not you know it's not good for you but sometimes the agents are cheeky so because we draw and we record all the all the listing history of a property and this could be across multiple listings multiple agents and you know uh, sometimes an agent can to recreate and regenerate some interest they, what they do they'll, they'll delete one of the listings and they relist it as a new uh, id you know as a new one and uh, so what it does is within right move it triggers uh, that the emails to be sent out and then you know we are proud to bring to the market this brand new blah 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 you know how it is you know and so with property filter we you know we see all of that you know we see it coming off on and off for for the day and uh, and you see them playing playing this game so whilst you know it might look like you know it's brand new you can you can see that it failed to sell three times before that they reduced the price a couple of times and it's the second in, agent involved basically with, yeah. with, with that a bit of a bs filter as well going on <laughs> yeah yeah quite a bit, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's really interesting and um clearly this is aimed for anyone who's investing in property for perhaps like you know strategies buy to let uh, hmos what about other people who is this suited to is it suited to commercial investors as well and what about people doing something like a rent to rent strategy <clears throat> yeah so it's mainly been built for uh so it's been built Initially, for the for us, for the Resi, so we've got really good, uh, really good data, really good features, really good filters for the, all the Resi space. And then last summer, we bought on uh, the commercial portals as well, and we've had people do. I think one of the one guy did three commercial to Resi deals found on property filters, putting all the money out on all of them. Uh, and then it's similar. It's a similar kind of uh, kind of system where. We uh, we match and merge things from different sources. Everything is in one place, and then you tr we track you know uh, in your leads inbox. You know, like uh, you, we identify the most motivated ones. There's like a motivated seller banner, and then amongst the a hundred property that is uh, listed, it tells you, okay, if you only do one thing today, go and look at these five ones or these two these two ones. And it's the same principle with with commercial. We have uh, the rental data, uh, but that's more of a byproduct of us looking for properties matching properties in our for sale as well as to rent. Um, and we don't really market it for rent-to-rent -rent, uh, people, so it's more of a. We'd like to say it's more of a serious tool for serious investors, so people who are more established in the, in in buying. And the truth is the the truth is that uh, although a property looks great, will stack as a rent-to-rent, -rent, you'll have the uh, agent in the way uh, that has a policy of uh, we don't do corporate let. So I don't, you know, we've had people find rent-to-rent -rent deals on property filter, but I don't claim that like, this is like. It's not really, it's how people use it, but it's not really why we built it for. Yeah, yeah. It certainly covers many, many bases, that's for sure. And, um, you know, like any good business, it's rare that it's just one person, right? So there's always oh, a yeah. team. Um, you've alluded to, to some of the other people that, that you're working with, some of the other co-founders. Um, and this is where it was interesting. We were talking the other day about wealth dynamics, right? And, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, both taking wealth dynamics. And um, I know you've done some education in the past as well. We'll talk about some of those other people, you know, in the team in terms of coach and mentors and support. But yeah. tell us about, you know, the dynamic with the people that you work with and, and how those wealth dynamics, you know, work so well. Yeah, so I got into property with my best man a uh, few few years ago, so I think five years ago in the UK, and um, and uh, I remember his speech at my wedding, and he says, uh, with Guillaume's leadership and my sense of organization, uh, we've done this, 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 and that, you know, so we were like, he was organizing the early days, and I was bringing people, basically, and we did so many things, you know, throughout uni and all our early professional life and, and, and stuff like that. And we never understood why this synergy always worked so well, you know, until we took a wealth dynamic test. Uh, I don't know, it was 2018, I think. And uh, and then it's like, oh, wow, <laughs> I'm a blaze, he's a steel, and uh, I'm like, a, I'm a star, he's more of a lord mechanic, and then, and then it just works really, really well, you know. And, um, and, I, and I would say anybody listening to this, anybody going into entrepreneurship of any way, anyone, anybody wanting to, understand more about uh, life you know like on, have a greater understanding of people you know how people work and interact with each other 
I mean, you've got to take uh, the wealth dynamic test just, you know, just to understand yourself as a star, and then it will make a lot of sense. And then you'll stop, uh, you know, like uh, swimming against the tide, you know, for certain things and tasks. And then you understand the team's dynamics, why people work well uh, with one another. And, um, and as a business, there is no way, you know, I could do this on my own. There is, I am not concerned of uh, my competition because they are one man band in their garages, you know, building like a, a stuff around data and property. But they, are, they don't stand a, st a chance against a team of founder with complementary skill. And so I was off for the last 10 days because I had, um, I had a baby. We were in, in neonatal care and things like that. We, we just came out of it yesterday. And uh, the business is just steaming ahead, you know, because I've got other founders, you know, they, it's, other, it's not even people on the team, you know, it's people that are, you know, driving it just as hard as me while I, I sleep, you know. Yeah. And um, as a business, I mean, uh, you you are setting yourself for failure if you go on your own and you hire skills and people and deal with turnover of training and, and entrepreneurs I, I've, I've come to to observe and learn you know we are like head in the cloud we are 100 miles an hour and it's really hard to get people you know like it's quite hard to get people at our pace and uh, we can be impatient and, and things like that so you can you know by basically sp splitting two ways or three ways of business idea you could go 100 times faster further so it's a no-brainer you know like the, the size of the pie you get is, is just so so huge and then it's not like uh, the, the business stops when you stop it just goes on all the time because there's always someone someone out there so find people who understand wealth dynamics for yourself understand teams teams dynamics to surround yourself with people you share value you, you've got complementary skills you share uh, uh, and vision and end goal and then um, you, you know, and then it's even emotionally, or, you know, like if you think of burnout or tiredness or exhaustion, you know, like you'll have ups and downs. And uh, what you want is be with other people who've got ups and downs, but uh, the likelihood is they, nobody's got downs in the same time, you know. So there's always a high. There's always a high because you, there's the few of us. And I've seen so many one-man one man band, you know, one-person band uh, entrepreneurs where everything stops when they burn out or everything stops when... When they can't do it anymore everything stops when uh finally after two years they want to take a bit of holiday you know and so it, it, it's really setting yourself for success teaming up with people and i know on the, one of the wealth builders pillar is jvs and things like that so it's there's no way we would be where we are uh, without this understanding and there's no way we would be continuing at the pace we are as a business without this understanding and the team and then it's also being really brutal with your, uh, so we are engineers, we are not marketers. Uh, so it's really understanding your, your strengths and weaknesses. So we can build the best product, but, uh, how do we do, how do we, how do we uh, bring this to market? You know, so, so it's where we identified the need that we needed a bit of a mentor, a bit someone to uh, help. And so it's where a year ago we had, um, so because of my network, so, uh, Saj introduced me to uh, Hanif, uh, Hanif Khan, who's jumped, who was our first investor, uh, jumped a year ago, and he, his expertise is in uh, property sourcing. So he, you know, sort of 10, 12 years ago, he, he had a company uh, training all the educators basically around uh, property sourcing. Uh, we used to source like 600 deals a year. Uh, you know, that was back, back in the days. And, and, and so this expertise and this uh, network combined with his, uh, what he's doing now is scaling um, startup companies. So he's been helping other uh, funders in the tech world, uh, you know, like doing partnerships and stuff like that. So these are like, two really strong skills we needed and we find it in one person, which, uh, which uh, lives uh, half an hour drive, you know, 20 minute drive from where I am, you know, so yeah. it's been, um, we, we've gone on quite a bit of a journey to find an advisor, uh, you know, like a non-exec, you know, like can, that is really, because everybody wants to help you when people see, You've got a tr you've got traction, so you'll have a lot of people reaching out to you, and then you think, oh well, they, they seem like they are an important person. They've got a name, and so on. But uh, and you say, oh wow, you know, such and such uh, wants to jump in. It's great, you know. But the reality is that your association with their name is is nobody cares. So what is your advisor going to do for you in your business? And uh, Anif is just incredible, you know, like uh, he's working as hard as us, you know, uh, it's uh, as an investor, you know, so it's really, really, really been great. And yeah, there's no way we'd be where 
we are right now, if we didn't have a team, so we are three co-founders. So me, my best man, and his brother. So his brother is the tech guy. And if you go into a tech business, uh, if, you, if you want to be like a tech uh, startup or something like that, you can do it with non-founder, you know, like non-tech founders, but it's, uh, it's, really, it's really hard, you know, because you are at the mercy of all those, you know, like those developer, you know, companies and stuff that uh, build stuff for you and then they send, you know, send you a bill and so on. So we build everything, we build everything in-house. So people thought we were a bit crazy, you know, at the beginning because uh, yeah, it's not the fastest and, and so on. And we invested a lot up front in the infrastructure. So we've built it. Uh, so it didn't make sense what we did, basically. So most people with a startup, they, <clears throat> they create like a, like a, a quick MVP that uh, holds on with, uh, you know, like, a, you know, what do you call this, like silo tape and, mm-hmm. and you know, wires and it's dingling away and it's great because they can bring it to market really quick. But we, we, we tested, we had a lot of certainty of what we, what we were building would work because the risk is building something nobody wants. But we, because it worked for us and it started to, it worked for people in our network and we could see the traction people get, we thought, okay, if this gets people results so fast, we, we are onto something, you know, like, so we invested a lot and we front loaded the, the building of the infrastructure, which is not uh, common in startups because you can't really afford to do that. But we could because we had, uh, we had uh, so the other founder did everything uh for the first uh, few the first few years and we could do it in-house we didn't like uh, spend a lot on external companies which puts us now in a very good position where the quality of the database is is, is the best out there uh, you know it's scalable it's clunky it's not you know it's not clunky it works really well it's fluid and the interface it's it's simple and now we can just we can add more people very fast into the platform without without it uh, breaking basically like we've seen yeah. uh, others in our space you know struggling with maintenance uh, or struggling with uh, data being out of date or things like that, because very quickly it becomes a monster, you know. So we've built it with the vision that where we want it to be, you know, with 10,000 people on it, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, an- another friend of Wealth Builders that I know you've been working with is Daniel Hill um, yeah. from Property Entrepreneur. And uh, Daniel's featured a couple of times on Wealth Talk, actually, back in yeah. episode 155 and uh, 172. So, um, you know, how, how did that come about and, and what kind of support has Daniel been able to give you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student of, of Dan. So I've been on his uh, Property Entrepreneur course for three years. So so it's really helped me with this entrepreneur mi- mindset thing. So so when I when I met Dan and I went to his Blueprint event uh, like three years ago now, uh, I was still in full-time, full-time, working full-time and I was lying to myself. You know, I, w- I was doing the HMOs and stuff, you know, uh, uh, single and HMOs, but um, I was too comfortable in my in the job. It's really hard to, uh, and then he, he taught me about journaling and stuff. So I've got, uh, yeah, I've got, so I've got stacks of them, uh, journals, you know, uh, with me uh, here. And this is where you write things, you write, you know, you, this is really, I, I had this in, big work and introspecting work on myself where I decided, okay, let's go. Let's go for it. Let's go with, uh, with Prop Tilter. And uh, yeah, you really helped me, helped me with that. And, uh, and he's helped me ever since, you know, uh, you know, as part of the property entrepreneur uh, things and, and, and stuff like that. But for me, it was really this uh, rewiring my brain uh, from um, from this uh, employee to entrepreneur, and you can maybe see behind me. So these are these are property entrepreneur board, you know, year of board. So this is 2021, the year of going all in, the year of transforming the tribe, 2022, and this year is the year of achieving orbit, where we launch something into space, but uh, with an idea of a balance between uh, with uh, my personal life as well with the baby just. Uh, coming home yesterday so <laughs> excellent everything begins with a plan yeah so, yeah. Um, so you know we've talked about the the software we've talked about the benefits who it's for and um i guess you know in terms of your own personal wealth building Guillaume, we've talked about you know property is one of your strategies business now is a strategy you yep. doing joint ventures um you've also been raising funds for the business as well haven't you so you know maybe just talk about uh what what you did there to get some yeah so uh, so it started in property for me so uh as i said at the beginning because i like the i'm a practical guy i'm a concrete person i like i like that in uk i can i can add value i can refinance i can control the ROI. you know from the outset i really like this predictability so you know you make money when you buy you know so you know i I like that so compared to uh, giving money to a a fund or something like that where 
maybe you get maybe this year you get that much maybe next year you lose you know so i i, I didn't like that um so i like property for this uh, the, the control i have on it uh, and which, especially sorry, when to you, interrupt, which you, yeah. you said to me the other day when you came from france you couldn't believe it in the uk like how yeah everyone wasn't doing property right yeah i mean i mean in france we don't have interest on the mortgages we can't add value and refinance so we can't raise more equity than the debt we have on an asset so we can only get a, a loan bought back by another another bank basically uh, after it comes with they, they are pros and cons as well so we, they you've got most of the mortgages in france are um, zero deposit but if they are all repayment mortgages and but there is no way someone can get into uh, can replace an income for property in a matter of months or years uh, in france because all is repayment and you, there is no way of generating monthly profit uh, from you know the difference between the the cost and the rent you know and the the way the system works in france is yes the interest rate will be lower they will be fixed for a lot longer like 20 years 25 years like we have like buy to let mortgages at two percent you know for 20 years you know but it's all repayment uh, but the thing is the the repayments sorry the rent don't cover the repayment so you have you are stuck in a job and you need if you want to scale your portfolio you need to have evolution in your job so that you can uh basically pay for the properties you know so 50 euros 100 euros a month maybe just to you know just to, just to subsidize it uh, but the good thing is that in 20 years you know like uh, you, you, you know like you're laughing because you have no debt you know anyway so it's a bit of a different culture but in terms of um, having your cake and eating it and having it right now mm -hmm. uh, you know interest only mortgages are magical here and the fact that you can refinance so the first deal I, we bought with property filter was on the market for 250. Uh, he, I think it was reduced a couple of times down to 225. Uh, listed with three different agents, so this is us matching and seeing that there was a story. And then uh, at the end, we went direct to direct to vendor uh, on it. We only spoke to the vendor and we bought it for 173, and it's now worth 450, which means you know like you get all the money out uh, and. and uh, you know, we've, there was also some refurb cost, you know, of course, but um, uh, to make it uh, an HMO, etc. But um, yeah, you can't do this in, in in France. You know, I could I couldn't use the same, you know, the same the same cash on one project and another one and the next one. I know we've we've recycled our cash on a few projects now, so yeah, that's quite um, that's quite yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we say in France, you know, like Parisians don't go on the Eiffel Tower, so you know, you guys don't realize the the pot of gold you're sitting on, you know. So yeah, yeah. And if a French guy can do it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting point, and and again, something I think Dan picked up on and talks about is you know sometimes you've got to design your life in order to get the result you want, and you know. That means sometimes, you know, stepping into a different area, a different location or changing your, your habits in order to be able to start building wealth. And I think that's a great example of how that's really, really helped you to accelerate things. So it's, it's really how it started, you know, like with property and getting a bit of traction in property and then learning to be an entrepreneur. So Dan helped me yeah, quite a bit. And, um, and then... And then when we incorporate, uh, yeah, with Property Filter, then it's, a, it's quite different. So it's a business. And... And it's quite a different, uh, yeah, it's quite a different beast altogether. And in technology, it's it's all, you know, it's quite different as well. So we did, uh, because we are a bit, you know, we are, I'm from the, I'm the equivalent of a Yorkshireman, you know, in France. So I'm quite, I'm a bit tight, you know, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so from where I'm from. So we bootstrap, you know, so it's what we do. So we, uh, we like to engineer our environment so that it's, uh, it's a bit uh, challenging. We burn the boats. And we bootstrap, you know, because it's life or death, and we need to make it happen. And I, and I think it's the accountability uh, I needed, and it's it's what we do. So, so initially, what we, what we've done, we just um, so in terms of people starting businesses, if you need funding, so there are some uh, something called startup loans you can get, which are uh, quite a, you know quite cheap loans, you know, especially in the current climate for businesses. They come with a there are loans. I think you can you can borrow twenty five thousand in your personal name per director for the use of the business. So if you are two directors, you know you can have fifty grand, three directors, seventy five grand, etc. You need to be UK resident, 
Um, and then you, you know, you need to present like a business model or something like that. You know, it's a game. You know, you know, play, you know, understand the rules, play the game. You know, so <laughs> make 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 it work. And but they are a very high success rate, and they, you know, they want to. It's a government subsidized scheme, and the private people you speak to, you know, like the, I can't remember the name of the bank, they they want to make it work. You know, so uh, they'll advise you and help you. But um, really, you have to. You will have to. Uh, Really, be um, uh, how do you say it? like um, be very. Uh, uh, I, I forget the, the term, but, but basically, you can you just understand the, the the rules of the game, fill the spreadsheet and stuff like that, and they, you know, eighty percent of of people get the get the loan, yeah. and that really uh, helps you start it, and it's repaid over five uh, five years or six years, uh, I think five years. Uh, you can have an interest free uh, period. Uh, but basically, you need, it's for a trading business, so for just to kickstart things at the beginning, and you need to be confident that you're going to make the you know the money to pay back the the repayment uh, of the loan. So I think we did this in two tiers. So we had a, an initial tier with like we took sixty percent of the money at some point. We had an interesting interest free period for a while, and then as we started to get revenue, we, they, we this allowed us to unlock the second the second the second tranche. Uh, and uh, and it's how we we got uh, sort of started, <clears throat> and then as you start to get traction, uh, we used uh, the CDIS scheme. So I know for some of your listeners, that can be interesting as a as a as a funder as well. So it's really really interesting. So it's for early stage high risk uh, startup businesses. You you are incentivized if you invest and you get um, in your own name. So you can't invest from a company. Uh, or a group structure or anything like that. It needs to come from your own name. You can, um, and that's on new subscription of shares of the business. You can uh, get fifty uh, percent of your investment back uh, of your tax bill. So typically, some of our investors they put uh, like twenty k in the, to get a small uh, share in the business, and uh, the cost to them is ten k because. Ten, you no, know, half of it was written off uh, by HMRC on their on their uh, on their tax. So mm-hmm. if you're paying tax and you you know you've got cash around, it's you know obviously do your due diligence in what you invest in. But that's quite um, that's quite uh, interest, interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's no, really really good uh, advice there. And um, multiple streams of income. For you, Guillaume, property, business, IP that you've created, joint ventures. So, you know, really following what we talk about at Wealth Builders, which yep. is, you know, diversification. It gives you confidence. It gives you peace of mind. And and it's exciting, right? It's learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're, we're going to have to plug uh, Dan Hill again. <laughs> yeah, but, so basically, something that flipped my head around with uh, Property Entrepreneur is uh, this very simple concept of uh, what he calls the wealth param- par- pyramid. And I think he, he must have talked about this in, in your in your uh, wealth talk. And at the at the basis, you've got cash flow, profit, and assets. And uh, what I realized is that um, with property, I was, uh, you know, it was all mixed and, and blurry. Uh, and so it's multi- multiple stream, multiple streams of income, but for different purposes. So I now got my, you know, my personal lifestyle and bills paid by, you know, like my salary that comes from the trading business, you know, from property filter. And then I've got the property business that compounds, you know, like the the rent, you know, the rent, you know, is just going to use it, be used to compound and buy more property. So separating it uh, where before it was a bit more. Uh, you know, like you know, drawing drawing money from property and, and and things like that. So you can have a cash flow uh, business, you know, from you know, like really in property, um, um, uh, or you but you don't need to, you know. So for for us, it's our, <clears throat> how we've set it up. And then some of the property projects we do are in, in joint venture. Some of it are in our name. Some of it are under other companies uh, for different different purposes. So I've got the HMOs in one company. I've got the singlets in another company. And then we are offsetting. Some of the some of the cost by uh, getting more and more in our own name as well. Uh, some of the single ads. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I could talk all day to you, Guillaume. It's it's uh, uh-huh. so fascinating, you know, hearing your story and uh, the way that you've structured and you're approaching everything. But uh, for our listeners, I'm sure they're just eager to, uh, you know, have a look at Property Filter and, and understand what it does. So what we've done, we've put together a page, uh, which is wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash property filter, where there'll be a link where you can go and watch some videos, you can get access. But we're also going to add some additional support and benefits 
by following that link. So uh, do head to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash property filter for all the information as to how you can learn more and get started and get some extra support from ourselves as well. So um, Guillaume, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And, uh, you know, I know you've literally, as you mentioned, just had your, uh, you know, your your first child and yep. I can hear a few little cries from next door. So I'm going to let you go. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll be, uh, we'll be having you back on the podcast again soon to share some more exciting updates with us. Yeah, it'd be a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. And uh, looking forward to see you guys and work with you uh, when you uh, sign up and try Property Filter out. Thanks so much. Thanks again. Okay. I hope you enjoyed listening to that conversation there with Guillaume. I certainly enjoyed that one. And uh, Kevin, we will dive into the many lessons that I think we can pull out of that uh, in just one moment. But before we do that, let's pull out our latest review on Trustpilot and uh, not read out any for a little while. So uh, Stephanie has kindly left us a few words and Stephanie says, joining Wealth Builders has given me the confidence to progress my wealth building journey through the property pillar. When I joined, I was stuck trying to buy property locally where uh, where that was unaffordable. And the connections I have made through Wealth Builders has enabled me to take the necessary steps to move forward. And I'm thankful for all the support from my coach and other members of the community. And I'm excited about continuing my journey through more property investment, including the use of a SaaS. You know, there's a few lessons just in that review. And I'm sure some of those will be equally applicable to the interview you had with Guillaume as well. One of those is the whole idea of having different people with different perspectives giving you something else to think about. Because more often than not, when we're trying to build wealth, we're trying to break the current comfort zone that we're in, the current routine that we're in, whether it's in our job, in our businesses. And this more often than not, not always, forces us to be different, forces us to think differently. And when you do that, it causes tension. And that tension is best overturned when somebody else can help you hold it, when somebody else can help you in the end break it. So that 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 elasticity completely then breaks for you to be free to pursue another direction. And this is true of Stephanie. This is true of Guillaume but it's getting people and surrounding yourself with people who are thinking on your side. And that's tough, isn't it? Because there's no shortage of people who would try and deprive you of your precious money. Uh, and of course, uh, your precious time, which is often the big challenge. So the more that you can plug yourself in to a community that you can trust, and of course I'm advocating Wealth builders are such a community, but there are others as well, but also surrounding yourself with people who've got expertise that can make a distinction, give you an edge, sharpen your saw so that you can make the changes more quickly. And that's definitely true of Stephanie, and we've worked with Stephanie. And you can see it's obvious in the experience Guillaume had as an engineer first, you know, and what did he say? He said, I thought that was my job for life is my childhood dream. Um, but be careful what you wish for, I think he said. Yeah. But in reality, it's not about wishing for that. It's we all change over time. And I think inevitably, when you decide to become an entrepreneur, you've got to think about value. And this is almost the point I made about the children, isn't it? You've got to see value and understand value to be able to create value. And Guillaume has done a great job in looking at this country, looking at this market, and looking at what's going on to spot opportunities that his particular business, I think, has done an outstanding job in being able to, to help. And I think that the proof of that, of course, will come from his reviews and what people say. Do they get the result they want from um, from availing themselves of the services of his, his business uh, property filter? Yeah. Well, the early reviews are definitely good. I've seen those. Um, and we talk about people becoming accidental landlords. Uh, Guillaume, almost becoming the accidental entrepreneur there. But um, a really good lesson perhaps we can sort of hone in on is how you need to validate your business idea. Because a lot of people uh, put time, energy, money, resources into something that they're very excited about, only yeah. to realize that nobody else is that excited about. 
So there's a way to, to validate, and that uh, really begins with obviously identifying a problem first and foremost, and, and Guillaume certainly did that. Um, but then you've got to make sure there's a problem that is a problem for enough other people as well. So that's where you've got to have enough of a market that obviously are willing to spend money. And, and that ties into one of your lessons, Kevin, about finding a tight niche as well. Yes, uh, as far as wealth builders are concerned, we know that we are not gurus here. We are healthy uh, and, and open-minded guides, almost acting a bit like a financial GP, calling in experts whenever you need to. Uh, and that general knowledge has been built up over 30 years. So I think we've got some credibility uh, to be good guides. But looking for people who are outstanding in the niche, that's the language I use. Who do you know who's outstanding? Not mediocre, not decent, outstanding in their niche. And that's what we're trying to do is build our partnering relationships with people who are outstanding in their niche. But you can't be outstanding until you start and uh, because you've got to discover your niche first and then you have to, as you say, validate the business, get a minimal viable product, uh, get that tested. And more often than not, the best way to test it is to is to allow some people to avail themselves of your service so that you can build that reputation, you can build those testimonies. So you don't have to worry about the pricing at the beginning. You know, you just get people to to test it, get people to use it, iron out your lessons. Uh, and, and that's what uh, Guillaume's done. And to a certain extent, we did that in, in Wealth Builders way back when we started it. We tested it with people and said, hey, this isn't perfect. We're going to get better at this, but this is the first time we tried to create it as a, a series of step-by-step -step lessons. Will you give it a go and will you give us feedback? And that's basically how we approach wealth builders. And that's in to a certain extent how Guillaume is um, doing yeah. with it. Well, give a nod to all of our founder members who are still still with us, most of them even today. And, uh, you know, the, the academy and the program that we created is very, very different now from what it was when we launched back in 2019. But um, yeah, and, and the other thing really important is anyone going into business to, I would recommend, try and find somebody else to go into business with. And uh, it's very, very difficult when you're trying to do everything by yourself. And this ties in with... Wealth Dynamics as well. It does. I mean, the the interesting issue with Wealth Dynamics, which is your sort of, you know, your compass point for self, and then you balance out the north, south, east, and west, wherever you are. It's a difficult one, though, Chris. I'll caveat your thoughts with, with a lesson, though, that it's good to find people where you can get distinctions. You don't always have to go into business with them because you can get distinctions from a coach. You can get distinctions from your, uh, let's call it the founders, you know, you can get distinctions in other ways because there's a big danger when people set up businesses. Uh, and I've been, I've fallen into that trap, not just once, Chris, but twice, um, where I was enjoying the interaction with somebody else and then they didn't end up working as well as I thought. And not getting the right agreements in place, not getting the right documentation in place, doing things more from the gut call uh, and I think that's a lesson I've learned, being much more in the dynamic space, making gut calls more than uh, technically accurate uh, legal calls. Uh, and I've paid the price, you know, not a massive price, just relationship price, really, of having to get out of two relationships weren't, which weren't working for me. So I think you need that time to make that determination, uh, just for the to, to reassure the audience chris you're not one of them i guess i let's hope it's that time lucky <laughs> well you know i'm delighted that uh, we've done correct legal guidance and agreements with you and with paul brooks um again who's invited to be part of the board of wealth builders and i'm delighted chris that we've done that and actually we gave ourselves four or five years to do that didn't we so we didn't just come in and and not that we're sharing too much here but it wasn't come in, here's some shares. It was come in, let's see how it works. And then we gave ourselves plenty of time and we've done that. So I'm I'm thrilled with that decision. I won't make the same mistake again. So, uh, and, you know, I would give that bit of guidance to anybody. Yes, work with other people. But when you go into business with people, literally you're in business with them like a marriage for, for life. And, and you want to make sure you've done all the right legal and financial and relationship preparation to make that work. I know it's early days for Guillaume and I'm not suggesting anything will go wrong there. I don't know anything about that, but 
It's just a general bit of guidance that I would give, having learned lessons myself. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, joint ventures, of course, is is one of our seven pillars of wealth. And uh, we teach uh, our members how to do joint ventures correctly and how to be safe. And it always begins with building that relationship, not rushing into things. So, um, yeah, some key lessons there. Um, another important factor of any business startup is is funding uh, and money. And often businesses run out of money and that's one of the downfalls. So um, Guillaume mentioned some investment schemes that you know he had used as well. So what's your experience, Kevin, of, of people when they're looking for funding for a, an early stage business? Yeah, it's very difficult, uh, as you said, because you know the minimum viable product is normally what a fund is gonna be looking for. Is there some evidence that enough people will demand this? So you need really good preparation. Not, not unlike a sort of a dragon's den scenario, really, where you need some numbers and you need to have numbers or you, or you need people who are, are willing backers. Now, obviously, we can, within joint ventures, you can help yourself because there are ways to access your pension to help a business idea, for example, through concept of SaaS. And, and you heard Stephanie mention that and, and, and many thousands now have been helped to be able to help themselves. Uh, CDIS, which is just a form of um, enterprise investment scheme, but seed means raising seed capital. There's a way to do it. I've seen people do things with crowdfunding, um, including crowdfunding for, for nonprofit. So there are many ways. So learning how to access funding, and, and uh, not least if you've got joint ventures with, with people who you do want to work with, then it would be a reasonable expectation that those people bring something to the table, whether it's, you know, where, wherever the funding come from. But the, the other lesson though, Chris, on funding, I would say here is um, essentially in when it comes to property, which is Guillaume's business, you know, we've, we've written a little, uh, what would you call it? Um, infographic? Yeah, it's like a worksheet, which uh, helps property investors, yeah. Yeah. So so we've written a one which is called the seven F's. So the seven stages of a successful property business, ranging from the the finding the property in the first place, and which which in the end, if you don't start, you don't ever get to be successful. So I think the very essence of property filter is helping with the finding. Mm. And uh, he very ably demonstrated you know, some of the tricks of the trade the estate agents play to fool people into thinking. But he, he did mention this this whole idea of, of, or if he didn't mention explicitly, you can imply it, which is you have to understand the mindset of the, um, let's say, the motivated seller. And a motivated seller is one who wants to achieve a result. So it's in the same way you have to look at value. You have to look at what value you're bringing and the, the techniques to to bring properties to almost look like they're brand new listings and so on. And and I like the way he described the, the psychology of an initial seller who, when they first bring their property to the market, they're full of expectation, full of optimism for what they'll get. And they're not motivated at all. They're still in that early glow of, 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 of hoping they're going to do a lot better. But anyway, the... The seven stages, Chris, and I won't go into the detail of them, but I'll mention them just to see if uh, there's enough interest. We could we could create that as a download for our listeners to the podcast, which is you know find it the you know, art of uh, discovering opportunities in the first place, then fund it, and funding comes very quickly on the back of that as a whole different set of skills around funding. Uh, fix it, do whatever work needs to be done to add value. Uh, fill it, well, let's assume there's a tenant or tenant type, uh, so get the property yielding a, a return. Then flow it, in other words, getting to a point where you're creating a flow, you're multiplying that activity, that action, you're turning wheels, as, as, we, term, as we term it. Uh, you then create a formula for your own success so that you know how everything works. Now you systemize it. And when you do that, it's freedom because you don't need to be involved. I see so many people, though, try and take shortcuts on that journey. You know, they'll try and find somebody else to find. Nothing wrong with sourcing, but 
you've got to source or use sources with integrity and with a reputation. Uh, so many examples of people paying for sourcing or paying for fixing of properties, uh, which really they've been scammed out of money. And so it's very, very dangerous. So you must, must spend time in your due diligence with every relationship on that journey and don't try and accelerate that to the point of cheating it and hoping you know, somebody else is doing a better job. You have to learn the work that needs to be done to then ably delegate it because delegation with responsibility is where this is at, not delegation that turns into abdication. And we see that in all aspects of life and, and none more so, I think, Chris, in our wealth building pillars and pensions and investments, we see people just giving their money to third parties, hoping that one day, someday, things are going to turn out and invariably they don't. Yes. Thanks for sharing that 7F formula there, Kevin. And uh, I think the the formula, the, the, the second to last one as well, is where IP can be created, isn't it? Once you've systemized and packaged it up, then you can ultimately generate an income stream from that as well. If you well, choose. exactly right. Or a franchise or a license. There's so many different ways you can create value once you've got the formula. But you have to nail the formula, not just hope the formula works, because it's not formulaic unless it's a genuine system that's been tied in, tried and tested many, many times from all different angles. So yeah. good point. Should we make that available, should we? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, if someone would like to download that, if you're listening, uh, head to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash 7F, F for Freddy, F for formula. And uh, we will, uh, yeah, we'll make that available for you. No problem at all. Um, so, um, so I think that probably wraps things up for today, Kevin. Did you have any final points you'd like to make? Uh, no, I think you pulled out all the good lessons and we've touched on so many of them today. And um, yeah, I think it's been a good episode and I'm glad I'm back and participating again and looking forward as we inch ever so slowly towards episode 200. Feels feels like, you know, we, we need to be celebrating or doing something at 200, Chris. Absolutely. We will have a chat next time we see each other, which will be tomorrow, in fact. Yes. Uh, we see each other maybe we'll have a little chat about that yeah let's have a party and uh and we met for a bit of golf as well didn't we last week so that was nice some of us played golf yeah. <laughs> some of us just waxed some balls wildly around around the course something anyway, like always room for improvement kev yeah always <laughs> right you know you're turning up and you're participating and that's great and and paul god bless me played, played a blinder two birdies yeah Wow, I've never seen him get two birdies before, but there you go. <laughs> what an impressive round. Yeah, so that was fun. That was good. Yeah. Well, good to have you back, Kevin. And uh, we hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode. If you did, why not share it with uh, somebody that you know who might also find this helpful or someone who's in property? And uh, just one final reminder, if you want to find out more about Property Filter, head to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash property filter and you'll be able to sign up for a free trial and uh, even get a little bit of an extra special wealth builder discount should you wish to uh, give that software a go so uh, all the details the video you can see exactly how it works what it looks like and sign up for a free trial to give it mm -hmm. a go so uh, yeah all right take care kevin we'll catch up same time same place next week we will do indeed and until next time my friend see ya